Here's a baby! Then, this is the, the, the worst thing <laughs> to wake up. We've been looking for him for nine hours. <laughs> We've ridden every neighborhood in Jackson. We've been out down back roads behind bushes. <laughs> We've been everywhere. She feel a lot of guilt. Family members say Kingston Frazier's mother, Ebony Archie, is distraught behind the murder of her six-year-old son. She feel guilt from the fact that she made the decision to go into the store and leave uh, Kingston uh, inside of the car uh, with the car running. Mr. Washington, did you play any role in killing the six-year-old little boy, Kingston Frazier? Does his name sound familiar to you? Did you have a part in killing him? We have three individuals in custody uh, for these crimes. They are currently here in the, the detention center at Madison County. Uh, they'll all be charged with capital murder at this time. Or do we intend to charge him with kidnapping? And the answer is no, because what makes, in this instance, what makes this a capital murder, which would make these defendants eligible for the death penalty, would be the fact that the victim was killed during the commission uh, of a kidnapping. We had one of our deputies working at the Kroger uh, he witnessed a female coming out of the store and they made eye contact and she mentioned my car is missing. Uh, at that time, uh, this deputy, as we say, drew a case number for the report because at that time we felt there was an auto theft. Uh, not knowing at that point there was a child in the back. Three young Mississippi men were arrested hours after six-year-old boy was found shot dead in his mother's stolen car and the suspects will now be charged with capital murder, according to police. The mother of the six-year-old boy, Ebony Archie, left him in the car with the engine running while she went inside the supermarket early Thursday. The store's parking lot is patrolled by sheriff deputies, including one in a golf cart. But security videos show that after Archie left, another car drove up, a man got out, and drove off in her car. A child abduction alert was played out repeatedly on local newscasts after the incident. It was announced on Thursday that authorities plan to charge Byron McBride, DeAllen Washington, and DeWan Wakefield in the death of the child. Police found Kingston Frazier shot at least once in the back seat of his mother's stolen car. Frazier had gone missing after 1 a.m. Thursday when a man was seen in a video taking the car from the parking lot of the supermarket. After the child's body was found, the three suspects were arrested within hours thanks to the video and witnesses helping to identify them. Hello everybody and welcome to the Wake Up Report. The system really does go out of its way to conceal the identity of dirtbag, sleazebag, scumbag killers that like to murder little babies. So what I did was I took a screen grab out of that video so you could see this nigga's face as he's being led out of jail before they cover it. There he is right there in the red circle. His name is D. Allen Washington. I made sure to put his name up too so you could put a name to that nigga's face. And this is just is how my mind works. The absolute irony of a blanket being put on this nigga's head with the word Genesis on it. I took another screen grab and you can see it right there. That says Genesis class of 2016. Where did this nigga graduate from in 2016? The school of killing and murder, and obviously with the word Genesis uh, and 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 the you know reference to the Bible. And I don't know. It must be a different kind of Bible. You know, in the beginning, God created these wild ass savage niggas to just run roughshod and raise hell on earth. Fuck that nigga. Fuck them other two niggas that were with him. And instead of giving them a lethal injection because all three of these niggas deserve to die, what you need to do is you need to put each one of these niggas in the back seat of the car that they stole and put a bullet in their fucking skull in that back seat. That's how you handle niggas like this.
And now that we've got that out of our system, <laughs> let's get on with the show. Now, we're going to do this a little different because uh, in most of the stories that you will read concerning uh, uh, these three sacks of crap, uh, everybody knows that they uh, deserve exactly what they're going to get as far as the death penalty. But I wanted to look at this from a different perspective because the absolute, again, we're talking irony and in the state of Mississippi, a state whose history of violence and vicious attacks against blacks, lynchings, rapes, murders, killings, okay? The ground is soaked with the blood of the victims, the black victims of Mississippi violence perpetrated on them by racist whites. With a history like that, the South should be producing some of the most aware blacks, in my opinion, when it comes to violence. Blacks should not be killing each other simply because if you have to just leave it at one, one thing, because of the history of violence against blacks in Mississippi, Alabama, and other states, they should be a little bit more sensitive to violence when it's perpetrated against blacks. But this is a clear cut example of when you don't know your history, you are condemned to repeat it. And in our case, we repeat it on ourselves because we don't lash out at the source of our oppression. We lash out at the other oppressed people. These three niggas absolutely disgrace every black person whose blood, sweat, and tears, and sacrifice put them where they are today in a position to be able to do what they want, achieve what they want, pretty much go out, get a job, and buy a car if you want a car, but that's not what these niggas have evolved into. These niggas have evolved, they devolved into nothing more than savage brutes that run roughshod in their own communities. If you look at the video, that, that, that has become commonplace in most black communities. A bunch of women crying and wailing and acting up in front of cameras because black men can do no better than what they are doing because black men seem to want to excel in being savages, bloodthirsty, killing savages. So when I get on a moron like Kevin Gates who kicks a girl in the chest and you all call me a coon, a sellout, I could care less what you say about me because I know I'm telling the truth. It's niggas like this that listen to Kevin Gates and they act out exactly what he talks about. They go out and do this killing. They go out and do all this stealing and robbing and murder and you all seem to think that that's not what being a coon is. Being a coon is when you talk about people like this. So let's start with a little bit of a history lesson. Uh, we'll start with that little light-skinned mulatto nigga, Dewan Wakefield. Well, Mr. Wakefield, if you knew anything about your history, then you would know, since you were born and raised in the South, that that light skin that you have on you is probably the result of a rape that occurred in your family back in the day. Eight out of 10 times, some black slave woman was raped in your family, and you carry that rape with that light skin. But it would seem to me you'd be a little bit more sensitive about snatching up little black kids and doing violence to them. You other two niggas, for the f simple fact of that dark skin that you carry, the white boys used to snatch you up off the street, string you up by a rope, set your ass on fire, and let you swing from the highest tree they could hang you from. So you would think that you'd be a little bit more sensitive because you're born and raised in the South of doing violence to a six-year-old black boy in the backseat of a car that you stole. You could have just put the boy out on the street. You could just drop the boy off, but that's not what you did, Mr. Byron McBride, because you're the nigga that pulled the trigger. After Hitler and the Nazis absolutely fucked over those Jews, they made sure that they would never be in a position to have anybody do that to them again. When the United States dropped that bomb on the Japanese, they put themselves in a position so that in the future, something like that would never happen to them again. Our people have been getting fucked over for I don't know how long, and what do you do? Instead of putting yourselves in positions so something like that would never happen again to you or 
or your children, you turn around and you exact the same, if not worse, levels of violence upon yourself. Far worse than anybody has ever done to you in the history of this country. So don't talk to me about what white people have done to you. Don't talk to me about white cops shooting black kids and brutalizing black men. You all are more than willing to do it to yourselves. And for some reason, black people won't call out other black people when it comes to stuff like this. For some reason, people like me are coons when we call out stuff like this, but you all seem to think that this is normal. And now we're gonna go where nobody is going to go, but somebody needs to go because the truth needs to be told. Don't come walking up down the road talking about where's my son, where's my son, when you're a grown ass man that's got to hold his pants up because you ain't got enough sense to wear a belt. A grown ass man that should have known where his six year old son was uh, as opposed to being in the back seat of a car at one o'clock in the morning. Odds are you haven't had anything to do with this boy since this boy's been born. And now that this boy's been killed all of a sudden, you want to step up and you want to play daddy. You should have played daddy and called mommy and said, look, if you're going to be out late at night, bring my son to my house. Bring my son to where I am because I do not want my son out late at night. So don't try to play father now that the kid is dead. And you're right, sir. You're absolutely right. This boy's mother should feel extremely guilty because this is all her fault. This dumb heifer left her child in the backseat of a car at one o'clock in the morning with the keys in the ignition and the car running to go into the store to buy something. No responsible parent in their right mind would leave their child at one o'clock in the morning in the back seat of a car with the keys and the ignition and the engine running. So I don't feel sorry for you. You can do all the crying and the wailing and the moaning and they can carry you up and down the block. You can do as much of that as you want. This is your fault. I feel sorry for your son. I feel sorry for the fact that he had two parents that ain't got the good sense that God gave a billy goat. All of you are 90s babies or you're the byproduct of 90s babies the most violent useless destructive generation of blacks to come out of black america since black america has been in the united states of america that six-year-old boy was the start of a new generation that hopefully would not have to inherit the mistakes of these 90s babies and their vicious, violent behavior. But you niggas just won't let it go. You will not be satisfied until you corrupt and destroy everything that you come into contact with. So black America, you're gonna have to make a serious choice. You're gonna have to decide do you move forward and progress as a group of black African peoples or do you continue to put up with these wild savage niggas that will tear us down and have no regrets about it? They will not let us go. It is time to let them go. This is KTM and the Wake Up Report saying think a little bit. It will do wonders for you.